Today, let's talk Cybertruck. We're now seeing significant numbers of Cybertrucks being delivered to other U.S. states than just California. 200 were just delivered to Chicago. Our guest today will share his forecast for the production rates, and he's on the high end, expecting 80,000 by end of year. The ramp is growing. They seem to have solved the main issues that were expected when rolling out a new vehicle. So welcome Larry Goldberg. He's going to help us go through this. He's always been uh, somebody who's been pretty optimistic about the rate of uh, Cybertruck production. And it's looking like that you are being proven correct. Like you said, it was going to be slow in the first uh, quarter or two, which is where we are now. And then you said it was going to start moving up a lot more than most people were saying six months ago. You seem to be so far correct. Thanks, Larry, for joining us. Thanks, David. Well, my actual original um, forecast at the top end was 100,000 for the year. They still have a shot at it. Um, it's not a done deal. Uh, we certainly will exceed 80,000, uh, but I think we have a shot at 100,000. The um, you know the bottom line on Cybertruck is just keying in the um, machinery, getting it to full, getting the machinery you know really pro pro productive. Um, there's not a lot of manual labor involved in the Cybertruck, uh, and that which there is is relatively straightforward. So, you know, apart from electrical complexities, um, for the most part, the mechanicals are highly automated. So I, I think we're going to see the rate of production continue to rise very rapidly. I do believe that uh, they are consistently doing 200 Cybertrucks a day. I think they are um, reaching to 300 Cybertrucks a day on uh, several days of the week. Um, there are stoppages as they you know, perfect the line. But I'm very comfortable we're going to exceed 80,000, and I think we're going to head towards the 100,000. And as for demand, there's really endless demand. Even at these foundation prices, they haven't actually stepped back from the foundation program yet, because I don't think they need to. Friends of mine are just receiving some of, the, some of my friends are now just receiving their cyber trucks. Others are still waiting. Yeah, let's uh, let's find out. Like I've got a number of videos to show the demand, who's you know buying these trucks, and then we've got uh, a video as well where or, uh, somebody who's actually saying that there's you know the whole Tesla Q story of oh my gosh there are so much in the parking lots and that means they can't sell them. But what's really funny about that was the uh, Cybertruck program manager himself weighed in on the conversation. So we'll, I'll save yeah. that for a little bit later. That's, that's a fantastic, uh, you know, uh -huh. you know, smash down on somebody who was saying something. So let's start with, right. we are seeing the Cybertrucks being delivered all across the country. Now there's a sighting here of 200, uh, being shown here in Chicago. Our good friend, Jeff Lutz just, uh, received his Cybertruck as well. He's been waiting for it for a long time, but, um, you know, this is it, right? They're starting to show that this is 200 here in Chicago. Any thoughts about, you know, the, the way that they're distributing this? Well, we experienced the same thing, um, you know, in our area in North Carolina. Charlotte got a, a shipment, they distributed them. We had to wait uh, in the Raleigh uh, Cary area, the Triangle area, and then all of a sudden we got ours and then there was, you know, you know, 20, 30 uh, cyber trucks in our area, which really approximates 200 in Chicago. So it it is really being done uh, regionally and it's being done, you know, foundation series first. And so um, we're still you know, right in the depths of that program. So I think uh, we'll see, you know, some more uh, rounds like this. I think uh, Raleigh will get uh, or North Carolina will get another round. A friend of mine just received theirs in Michigan. So, you know, it, it is regional and it is step by step, but the backlog is a huge, it's huge. <laughs> it, it just never ends. No. 
and then uh, the demand for this, right? I mean, we're seeing celebrities left, right, and center just showcasing this without being paid. Here is a good one from Kid Rock. Apparently, was at some sort of uh, monster truck event or some sort of rodeo, maybe. And uh, there he is. Yeah, he's doing his he's doing his gig on the back of the cyber truck. I mean, it doesn't get better <laughs> than this, guys. Yeah, you know? it, it is. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it, it's it's the one thing for them to just be driving around regularly. It's another thing to actually use it in a show with, you know, like obviously right. it's going to be showcased like this, thousands of people. So that's awesome. And then we're seeing that the Cybertruck is is making the rounds across the world, right? So we've seen it in Germany, we've seen it in Korea and Japan. Now it's unveiled in France at this event. I'll turn off the music again so that we don't get copyright issues. But uh, they're showing this off around the world and there's always a big uh, sign. What's your thought about their strategy about kind of like showcasing this this is great. I, you know, I, I think there's a lot of pressure to deliver the Cybertruck to Europe. Um, it, it's interesting as to whether it's going to be legal or what what variations they can get under the current laws. Listen, I've seen some very big trucks here uh, in a lot of places, and so I think I think there's an, uh, a room, there's place for a Cybertruck here. I'm actually going to see the Cybertruck in Madrid, and then I'm going to catch it again in Copenhagen. Um, so um, there's a lot of excitement about the Cybertruck. I was at dinner the other night with a friend who lives here in, in this area uh, and, and very excited, wants a Cybertruck. Um, I invited him to come and drive mine in, in uh, Kerry and he, hopefully he'll come and, and try it out. But a lot of excitement here. And by the way, I see a lot of Cybertruck t-shirts a lot of Cybertruck vests. I mean, there's a lot of excitement for this truck, a lot. Do you think that, uh, you know, with all the celebrities, with it being now the larger numbers, people are seeing it out there, like, but what, 99% of people have never seen this truck before, don't know what it is, right? I mean, we're just at the very, very beginning, or do you think it's already yeah, yeah. got to the point where, you know, even my children, my wife, they, they at one point my my daughter sent me a photo goes is this a cyber truck and it's not <laughs> and i thought boy you know i thought you'd know what a cyber truck looks like by now because obviously uh but she didn't you know so you know you can't take for granted that people even know this thing exists what, what do no, you think you can't. Um, it, it, yeah. it turns heads wherever wherever people go i i get emails yeah. from people in my area in Kerry to say Hey, I drove past your house. There's this truck. There's this not truck. There's this thing in your driveway. Are you aware of this? I mean, you know, is it a rocket? Is I mean, they don't right. know what it is, you know. And uh, so, the, I mean, there's a lot of excitement. I'll tell you, wherever you drive in this car, in this truck, you see people with their cameras out. I mean, yeah. everywhere you drive, every it's gonna be like one of the people. For six yeah, months, a year, do you think, or even longer, right? Because it's just something that... It's going to be a while. Yeah. It's going to be a while because, you know, if you think about a couple of hundred thousand trucks spread across the United States, it's mm. like the Model 3 was or the, you know, Model S was. I mean, it's going to turn a lot of heads for a long time to come. There's going to be a halo effect from this truck. All right, let's share some more information here. This is Tesla Chan. Tesla Chan, he's a very reliable uh, information that he's been sharing for a while here. Uh, he yeah. says, Cybertruck has moved to a railroad to meet high demand. That's his interpretation, but this is the video that he included. You know, um, yeah, just, again, lots of Cybertrucks. Moving to rail, yeah. yeah. Moving to rail to drive this, you know, to get it out there. Uh, again, now I guess we're getting to the numbers now where they need different kinds of uh, transportation to move. Okay. Yeah, once they one. get beyond, you know, the, the 50, 80 cars a day that they were doing in the last quarter and they get to the 100, 200 cars a day and then going next quarter to the 300 cars a day, um, 
it's going to be absolutely necessary to do rail transport. And that's what, you know, te uh, Giga Texas is set to use that railhead. And so we're going to see the move to rail. I, I think we will see a consistent quarter of a million um, starting next year. I think we'll hit the quarter of a million next year. Already um, next year. A lot of people. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. In my judgment, I think the um, I think the factory equipment will be in place to do that before the end of this year. I think it'll be keyed in by the, by the end of this year. And I think we'll get to that quarter of a million uh, cyber trucks next year. And I think it'll be steady state. And I think cyber truck sales are going to grow. I think there's going to be pressure to add, add more production. I don't understand why China wouldn't uh, be a very big market for cyber trucks, a very big market for cyber trucks. We could export cyber trucks to China without a problem and then you know add a, a factory in China for cyber trucks. I mean cyber trucks could well be a, a volume product. There's no reason for it not to be a volume product. It's an outstanding product. Outstanding product. Look, if you've driven a cyber truck, have you driven a cyber truck yet? No, I'm not. Yeah. Oh, come on, Herbert. <laughs> I've seen it. Don't that. tell me you don't have one on order. I do not have one on order, <laughs> Harry. I don't. Herbert, I, I'm I, very disappointed. I'm I, very disappointed. I, I, I have, I, uh, you know. I, um, I, don't, I don't know if I'm prepared to talk to you anymore. I mean, come on. <laughs> I okay. mean, come on. Listen, I, I, it is the most comfortable drive you will ever have. I mean, yeah. this is a guy who's driven every kind of car, who's had every kind of car. It is the most comfortable drive you've ever had. And, I, you know, yeah. add FSD on top of that. Oh, my God. I can't wait to get back to my side. I am I downsizing, much, Larry. I mean, we're downsizing, okay? And, like, yeah, we're getting so downsize ready. the house down. But, but the side <laughs> truck is a whole different world. Well, like uh, right now, my for me, it's like I I have my eye on the roadster. That's the one I want, and I'm middle age, you know. I'm going through that thing, but boy, that car is just gorgeous. And I'm not even a car guy. I don't really care about cars at all, ever. But the roadster is gorgeous. Um, yeah. I don't know the Cybertruck. Yeah, I have a red. I I buy a roadster for sure, no doubt about it. Yeah, I'll get a roadster, but you know, at my age. What am I going to do with the roads? I mean, what are you doing with a Cybertruck, dude? A Cybertruck, actually, you know, I've driven uh, across country like four times in the last two years. My Cybertruck has double the mileage of the Model wow. 3 that I had. You know, and I thought the Model 3 was perfect for me. A little car, you know, yeah. zip yeah. around, the few miles I do, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Well, when I got the X and I took to the road. And so, you know, I've traveled that, you know, that road to Boca Chica three times. I've done, you know, Los Angeles. I've done. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, it's just a different world, a different life. And now we're going to get the, the new director cell um, antenna for Starlink. Starlink. Oh, man. To the cyber Done yeah. deal. Nice. Deal. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, you know, you're expecting 80,000 for this year and you're still expecting 250,000 next year over. And then one of the reasons why that the Cybertruck was delayed, possibly, you know, not delayed, just normal things that they found. Um, I just did a video with Jeff on this a few days ago, Jeff Lutz, AutoLine had broken down, you know, tear, tore down the cyber truck and they found yeah. that there was areas that they had water ingress and they just solved it with an, a simple putty to, 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 you can, he actually showed that here, see, they added this putty here to prevent the water ingress. These are little things that they discovered. Jeff thinks that that's a very good example of why, you know, at first it's going to be slow, little things like this, you can't figure out until it's out in use. And then they go, oh, okay, oops, this is an issue. Let's fix it. Let's fix it. Let's fix it. So that's why he's also quite confident at this point that we're now getting to the point of increase um, yeah. scale. They got this nailed. You were saying that uh, when you toured, did you not tour the factory? Yeah. And you said yeah. what you saw just shocked you because it was automation for the Cybertruck. But then you said, okay, you noticed that they didn't have everything automated yet. But by the time we're here, mid-June, 
you're going to start, they're going to start adding in more automation because now that they feel confident that the car is truly locked. Is that right? The, the key issue behind the automation uh, observation was they only had half the machinery necessary for yeah. production levels to get to the quarter of a million. So the biggest issue was the metal forming machines. They had one machine to get to the production they need, they need two machines. And so they were taking it one step at a time. They were getting that machine locked in, keyed in. They were getting production you know, optimized on that machine before they brought in the second machine. So the question is, when does the second machine get in installed and when it goes up to production? And you know, I'm I'm not prepared to, you know, venture a, a guess at, at that, but I think that's going to be the key to stepping that productivity level up. All right, let's uh, show this person here. This is kind of interesting. That you have somebody, a guy named Kevin Malnuck, and he said this: Tesla employees mentioned that they have Cybertruck stock with no customers willing to pick them up. Prices are too <laughs> high, they say. Good news is the foundation series may soon come to an end. Demand peak for sure, as we see the prices on the used market come way down. I'm still worried for Tesla's Q2 and cash burn as inventories build. Other locations in Florida are packed and overflow lots are as full as ever. So he showed a couple photos where there's these overflow of these um, these trucks sitting here and he's claiming he spoke I to Tesla employees. I can't six trucks. That's one day's delivery. It's, it's, yeah, yeah this, if, yeah. right. It's crazy that this is considered overflow. And then what's hilarious, yeah. what's so funny, this guy, Sedan, uh, I don't know, I didn't catch her, his last name, I was Sedan, something. Oh, yeah. He says, not correct. We, we are actively building foundation series. This guy <laughs> is Cybertruck vehicle program manager. <laughs> <laughs> I you know, love this it. is this is like you know, this is exact. This is such a great example of exactly what happens. <laughs> People who know nothing claim to know everything. Sometimes they will quote, you know, Tesla employee. Sometimes that can be a true Tesla employee who knows nothing, and sometimes it's just made up, whole cloth. Who knows? But you know, then you hear from the real people. So I, I, all I can tell you is that they're still delivering foundation series. There's still a lot of people waiting at the foundation series price level. And there are a lot of people who are clamoring. So we'll see, we'll see. Yeah. I mean, at this point, is there a doubt that this is not, not only is this a successful product, but it will sell way more than they even expected. Like, uh, you know, like uh, the reception that we're seeing, right, from the market, from the reviews, it's through the roof. This is exciting. Yeah. People want this. What do you think about the idea that yeah. that kind of like it's 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 still very, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's split in the middle. Some people absolutely hate it. Some people absolutely love it. Um, my wife, well, every true. time she sees that it, was... will still say that she goes, it's, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not good. And I will say, well, it doesn't matter what you think <laughs> you, you probably don't want the trucks in general, but you know what I mean? Like what matters is, uh, is there a vast majority of people love it? Yeah. I, I have, um, in, in everywhere I've taken the truck, I've had really solid, uh, uh, positive reviews, positive responses. Look, it it actually raises the issue of what do people buy? Why do people buy trucks? That's the first issue it raises because most people who buy trucks do not use it to pull trailers. Most people who buy trucks do not use it to put, you know, heavy stuff in the back. 80%, I would guess, maybe 70% of trucks really are domestic animals you know they domesticated dogs they are not hunting dogs yeah um in, in my view and, but people find them very useful it turns out for me it's extremely useful 
Uh, so my wife is an artist. She does a lot of work in, you know, on big pieces. We used to, you know, have to mess around to get. Now it's fantastic. We can mm -hmm. take as many big pieces as we like. So it turns out to be quite useful. Plus, for my road trips, it is so comfortable in that in that uh, cabin. Uh, and there's just two of us, but we're taking our granddaughters, for example, to Florida. That's going to be five of us. Just so much space. It's so comfortable. So I think it's changing the category. Mm -hmm. It's adapting the category or the category is adapting to it. And I think it's going to find a great fit in the U.S. It would find a great fit here in Europe. Uh, of that, I'm convinced. I've seen a lot of large American trucks doing fine doing very well in, in, the, in Europe. And I think it'll be great in China. So I think, you know, I think it's a category they're going to create. And I think it's going to be a long, long time in production. So, you, okay, let's go back to your predictions. You're thinking at this point, over 80,000 this year, you said it's going to be 250,000 next year. How, but then you said also, this is going to blow past regular truck sales, right? A million, two million. What, what's your guess at this point? Is it too early to be making these guesses or is it uh, yeah. you know, enough info? Yeah, it's a very interesting, very, very interesting question. I, I, I can see this truck. I can see this truck doing half a million, three quarters of a million a year in the U.S. without, without. Just the U.S. Mm -hmm. Now, if you add FSD to this truck, mm -hmm. oh my word. Whoa. Mm -hmm. You why? know why does FSC supposed to because, come? Uh, Elon said by end of June with twelve point five. Yeah. Look, FSC is going to have two markets. It's going to have a robot taxi market, and it's going to have a domestic market. Mm -hmm. People are still going to want cars of their own, and they're still going to drive cars of their own. Let me rephrase that: they're still going to be driven in cars of their own that they own, yep. and that is their exclusive use. But they will use it with FSD, as I do. My existing trucks now, yes, I do have to intervene now and again. And my 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 cyber truck has got FSD yet, but but my X has, my three has, and I use it all the time. So that's a given. So you know, I, it's going to be standard now. FSD. Rover taxi cyber truck is also possible because there are going to be uses of a, a truck use for where people will want to have the use of a cyber truck for a morning and afternoon or a day. So, and, or want to go on a trip with it. So there's going to be a huge market for cyber truck and there's going to be use, a huge market for a robo taxi or a robo truck, robo cyber truck, cyber robo truck, I don't know what. But to, yeah, um, I think there's yeah. going to be a market for both. Elon years ago, quite a number of years ago, had said that there might be a smaller version of the Cybertruck. Uh, what's your expectation for that? Is it going to happen? And then if it does, is it going to be even bigger sales than this? Or It should happen. It could happen. Um, right now, Elon is focused, very, very focused on getting RoboTaxi done, getting it out, getting on the street, getting the program up and running. Once it's up and running, how he divides the product um, and how he builds demand is entirely open. I've had a lot of conversation with a lot of people about you know various approaches and various ways. I've had some ideas, other people have had a, a, other ideas. I think Elon has a very, in his mind, he's probably got it set. But you know, when the rubber hits the road, we'll find out what the what will sell. I mean, he loves to design a product, and he loves to see people love that product. And people have loved his products by and large. Yeah. And many of these products come with surprises. Many of them come with surprises, and I think the Rover Taxi will too. I just uh, again did that show with uh, Jeff Lutz on Monday. And we looked at AutoLine's video where they tore down the Cybertruck and it turned out that it's future-proof. It actually has wireless charging and inductive charging yeah. ports. So it's ready for RoboTaxi. 
uh, or just a wireless mat, you just drive over it and it charges. So if they needed to, they can add that feature to it because the it's all set up and ready for it. So. Yeah, my theory is is that induction charging is not going to be good enough for RoboTaxi. RoboTaxi is going to depend upon very rapid charging. Induction charging is not going to do it. Trust That's me. my guess. It's yes. going to take a while. I, I think it's yeah. going to ha have to be a, a mm -hmm. physical charge. Now, a lot of RoboTaxis will not do the kind of volume of miles that it doesn't that it doesn't matter that they don't drive back and do an induction charge at night. But then mm -hmm. you need a lot of induction charges because those trucks are going to be so. It we're far from done in terms of a solution to that. I don't know what the solution is. Interesting. Thank you so much, Larry. Appreciate you. We'll uh, follow him on X at Tesla Larry. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. I've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the Tesla investor. Please check it out. Simply go to my website at herbertong.com.